All right, so in this last video, I'm going to talk about overloaded methods, which is a really useful tool at our disposal in object-oriented programming. Um, I had kind of briefly talked about this earlier when it came to using multiple constructors in one um, file. So I want to actually get more uh, Get more of an in-depth discussion about what it means to have uh, methods like that where you have methods with the same name but different parameters inside of the same class. So I'm going to briefly uh, briefly cover some stuff from 10.6 in the focus part but that's mostly just uh, the fact that we had two constructors in the same class. Uh, I'm also going to focus mostly on uh, A 10.3. So yeah, back when we were talking about this rectangle class right here, we had two constructors like this, the same name, uh, this new name right here, but they have different parameters. Um, this new has two integer parameters, this new has zero parameters, and I had put in a whole bunch of other example constructors with different parameter parameters that all um, did different things based on the parameters that they had, but they all kind of worked to accomplish the same thing. In the case of new right here, they all worked to accomplish, you know, initializing the uh, member variables directly or indirectly to specific values, either default ones or ones that the user passed in, or maybe some calculated values based on values that the user passed in. So that's kind of what I'm getting at right here. That's the idea that I really want to focus on. So when I talk about overloaded methods, I'm talking about two or more methods that have the same name but they each have different parameters from each other and they all perform slight variations on the same task based on those parameters. So what I talked about previously was that having the same name but different parameters means they all have what's known as a unique method signature. That method signature being the combination of name and parameters. And the parameter, uh, different parameters right here specifically refers to the different parameter types and amount of those parameters. So you can't have two methods with the same name and two parameters of the type integer because those signatures are practically the same. Even if the parameters have different names from each other, the fact that there's two integer parameters for a method, for two methods that uh, share the same name, that means that the, param the uh, signature is not unique there. So when you have unique method signatures for methods that have the same name, uh, that's when we have what's known as an overloaded method. And typically what we're doing is all of those methods, all of those overloaded methods are trying to accomplish the same task, but they are doing it in slightly different ways based on the information that's given to them in the parameters. Like I talked about just, be, uh, just recently, um, all of the constructors are trying to initialize the member variables to specific values. They're just doing different things based on the parameters they're given, like initializing them to default values or initializing them to user provided values or taking the user provided diagonal value, calculating the side length of a square and then setting the side lengths, uh, the length and the width to that calculated side length, just like that. They're all doing it in different ways, but they are all accomplishing the same thing of setting the length and the width of that rectangle to some value. So that, that's what I'm kind of getting at with the overloaded method here. Without the ability to overload, we would need separate names for the same task, which could be pretty confusing. So um, with overloading, we're able to have five different constructors that all have the new name, which is helpful because when we see the name new, we know that that is a constructor. Or if we have non-constructor methods that are overloaded, which is completely possible, if all of those methods have the same name, which is a very self-descriptive name, uh, 
then we know what all of those methods are doing. We just know that they're going about doing it in slightly different ways based on those arguments. And we have seen some overloaded methods before. For example, message box show has different um, different overloaded versions of itself that takes in different arguments. Like you don't have to specify every single one of those message box arguments. You can only specify a couple of them and it will kind of fill out the rest for you in a sort of default behavior. Or the string methods substring and remove have a two argument version and a one argument version. You always have to provide the starting index for what you want to keep or what you want to remove, but then you can optionally provide the length of the, you know, the, the amount of characters you want to keep or the amount of characters you want to remove. Well, those are overloaded versions with the same name. So there's the string uh, class has two overloaded substring methods, one with one argument and one with two arguments. The string uh, class has two remove methods, one with one argument that just says the starting index and one with two argument or parameters, the starting index and the length. Uh, and then object to string. There are uh, different overloaded versions of to string that every object has. You can have, um, or maybe not every object, but at least you know the integers or doubles or decimals have multiple versions of to string. Uh, many objects have multiple versions of to string. Some include the zero parameter to string, which does some default behavior, but then also. Uh, you can pass in a formatting string for the numbers and you know that is a separate uh, method signature it's two string with one argument instead of two string with zero arguments but it's still two string and it still converts that number into a string and returns that string and allows you to display it really nicely so that's another example of having overloaded methods is uh, are doubles and integers and decimals having the zero parameter version of toString and the one parameter version of toString. All right, so what I have here are two sub procedures that I created for the rectangle class. Um, they're not the most necessary because you could easily just have the user do this manually, but um, I'm just doing it for the sake of having a good time with Visual Basic. But uh, I, the first sub procedure is called grow. The user puts in some integer value that they want to grow the rectangle by, and I just add that value to the length and I add that value to the width as well. So if I had a 12 by 5 rectangle and I uh, called its grow procedure, its grow method, and I passed in 3, it would then become a 15 by 8 rectangle instead. Um, similar with shrink, if I passed in uh, if it was 12 by 5 and I passed in 3 as the delta, as the amount that I want to change it by, uh, it would then become a 9 by 2 rectangle. Now the nice thing, really quick with shrink, the fact that I'm using properties like this means that I don't need to worry about uh, passing in too big of an int delta right here. If I had a 12 by 5 um, rectangle and I passed in 1 million into the shrink method, it would just become a zero by zero rectangle because of how we have defined set in the property for length and width right here. That's why I'm using length and width and not int length and int width, the uh, member variables up there. So pretty useful to have. But let's say that I don't just want to grow and shrink by the same value. Let's say I want to actually grow and shrink by different values for the length and the width, right? Um, so let's talk about how you can actually do that using overloaded methods. All right, so I'll start with the grow method. Um, I'll just really quickly copy and paste it, uh, but you'll see that there's this error right here. Uh, public sub grow has multiple definitions with identical signatures. That's because both of these have uh, one single integer argument, so I better change that. But what I'll do, first I'll change the name of this. So int delta L uh, essentially is um, saying, 
I'm changing the um, int delta l as a name suggests that I am changing the length right here. But you'll see that I changed the name of this parameter, but I still get the identical signatures error right here. That's because the parameter name doesn't matter. The fact that they're different doesn't matter. It's the fact that it's grow with one integer parameter. They're, they're both grow with one integer parameter. That's what really matters here. So what I'll have to do is, I just also realized this is by ref. I put by ref here. This should be by val probably for safety, but whatever, by val. Uh, I'll put by val and delta w as integer and update the actual method body right here. So now we have two methods, both named grow. Um, they both essentially do the same thing, which is increase the length and the width by the specified amount. Length and width is increased by the, spe by the specified amount. But the difference in how they do it is that the two parameter version increases each one to the respective length and width increase amount versus the one parameter increases both by the same amount. So that is the nature of overloading. They're both doing practically the same thing. It's just the way they go about doing it is different. And that difference in the way they go about doing it uh, actually requires them to have specifically these different parameters and make, requires those parameters to be what they are and requires them to behave in that particular way, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I'll just do the same thing for shrink over here. Just make a couple of changes to shrink. And there we go. So now we have overloaded grow and we've overloaded shrink. That's how we say that we have overloaded methods named grow and shrink is that we say we've overloaded grow and we have overloaded shrink as well. Now, if I had a triangle class, uh, let's say, okay, I'm going to focus on get area right here. If I had a triangle class that was separate from the rectangle class and that triangle class had its own get area function, but rectangle only has one get area and triangle only has one get area, that would not count as overloading. It's only overloading if they're in the same object or in the same class definition. So grow is overloaded because there's two definitions of grow with unique method signatures inside of rectangle. But um, get area would not be overloaded, even though it's present here and also present in triangle. It just happens to be that they are the same. You know, they're two different classes with the same method name. And that's just a coincidence more than anything. There's no special relationship there. Unlike there's a special relationship here where grow is overloaded in rectangle because there's two definitions in the same class. So I just really want to point that out very quickly. All right, so here's just another quick example. This is the um, Woods uh, solution discussed in A10.3. But uh, we have some overloaded uh, constructors right here, as well as, you know, these auto properties. So you can see sort of how we're using auto properties along with default versus parameterized constructors. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, default constructor uses the member variables themselves, like so, whereas the um, parameterized constructor uses the actual properties themselves. And then we also have an overloaded get gross function. Uh, one just is for a uh, salaried employee that is paid twice per month. So get gross right here, just the, the, uh, the one parameter version calculates for a pay of twice per month, whereas get gross right here uh, is the weekly gross pay for the hourly employees. So this takes in the hours and the rate. They both calculate gross pay, but they both have to um, calculate that gross pay differently based on the information that is given to them. So that is how the um, get gross overload, uh, overloaded methods actually work. And then here's just how the overloaded methods are 
applied differently in code, we have this application that's calculating the gross pay and making some kind of report for those employees. But we have some hourly uh, radio button versus like a salaried radio button. But if we specify that the employee is hourly, then we uh, get the um, we get the number of hours and we get the hourly rate, and then uh, actually, you know, calculate the gross by using the um, two parameter get gross method of the employee object stored in the hour employee variable. However, if right hourly is not checked, that means that the uh, salaried employee um, radio button is checked instead. So they just uh, get the annual salary from the uh, actual annual salary list box and then uh, get the gross pay out of that using the one parameter get gross method of the employee object stored in our employee variable of type of employee. That's a lot of words right there. But yeah, that's how we're using this overloaded method right here. We're just putting in the different amount of parameters based on how we actually want to specify all that information. So when Visual Studio sees one double as a parameter, it assumes we're trying to calculate the annual salary version where they're paid bi-weekly. If it sees two doubles, it assumes that we're trying to calculate, you know, we're trying to run the um, weekly version with two parameters. That's why this unique method signature thing is so important. Visual Basic can't just rely on the name of the method. You know, the, the class that the method belongs to and the name of the method, since we're able to overload things like that, it also has to check the method signature and see how many arguments and the actual type of each argument in order to interpret and figure out which version of get gross it needs to run. So yeah, that's just another example of all of this in action. All right, well, that is our talk about overloaded methods. And with that, uh, that finishes up this discussion of this chapter. So objects are really cool to work with. They're a really neat programming paradigm that makes a lot of problems a lot easier to work on it kind of at least in my opinion was its own revolution of programming when we started being able to think about objects in this way in our programming so yeah that is how to make visual basic very explicitly object oriented i hope that this is a helpful topic for you